Namaste. So the world is in conflict. The world is in pain. The world is suffering. And the greatest cause of suffering, or the greatest suffering itself, is that people are pursuing so many things that don't make them happy. <laughs> In fact, the definition of neurosis is not knowing what really makes you happy and pursuing a bunch of substitutes instead. So take, for example, material possessions, wealth, houses, cars, toys, whatever kind of toys you like. <laughs> you can have them and you can enjoy them, but they're not going to make you happy. They're not going to satisfy you. They're not going to give you what you really want. And the same goes for fame, power, beauty, knowledge, religious merit, and so on. You know, these are all nice things to have, but having them is not going to make you happy, not really happy, not permanently and deeply happy. That's just the way the world is. As the Buddha said, it's temporary, unsatisfactory, and not self. So then, all right, what will make us happy? Well, I can only speak from my personal experience because I've had all those things. <laughs> I've had money and I've had fame and I've had all those things and it never made me happy. But these last two or three years when I've been worshiping the Divine Mother, her love has made me happy. Happy in a way that makes me see how all these other things are just a waste of time. And so it becomes easy to drop them. It becomes easy to let go of all these attachments, all these complications, because as soon as you own something, then you're responsible for it. You have to maintain it, care for it, protect it, isn't it? Because the nature of the world is that things come and go, especially money. Lakshmi, one of her names is Chanchala, which means unsteady. She's coming and going. So money comes in one hand and it goes in the other hand. That's just the way it is. And the same with all these other material opulences. You can't count on them. They're temporary and they're unsatisfactory. There's always something imperfect. Uh, it's never just right. The new car gets a flat tire two blocks from the dealer, you know. <laughs> or you get the new computer and then you find out that the software is all messed up and it won't run your favorite program. <laughs> You know, or you get the new, the new significant other, right? And you find out, you know, she's actually a nutcase or something like this. You know, I'm speaking from experience here, right? Or you know, as a guru, as a teacher, you get a disciple and you find out they're trying to use you for some kind of scam. You know, this also happens more often than you would believe. So then what is the satisfaction of living in this world when everything is not what it seems to be? It's just an illusion. Huh? You go to some spiritual group to get relief from your suffering and what happens? You find yourself involved in a cult. 
<laughs> and you didn't even see it coming. Huh? They got you with the whammy. <laughs> and then trying to get out of it is so painful because you've invested all your all your time and energy and let go of all your other contacts and network to be in this cult. And now you're trying to leave it and they're giving you all kinds of pain. Oh my God. So this world is not the source of happiness. This world is the source of suffering, birth, death, and everything in between. It's nothing but suffering. Because why? It's illusory, temporary, unsatisfactory, and not self. But now let's talk about Ma. Let's talk about the goddess. She is not temporary. She is permanent. She is everything. She is the world. And even when the world isn't manifest, she is still there. And then she is also satisfactory. Huh? She's beautiful. She's perfect. She's God's wife. I mean, who could be more beautiful and perfect and satisfying than that? And she loves us unconditionally. That means she accepts us just the way we are. After all, she made us that way, right? <laughs> Whatever it is. Whatever we are. And she loves us for that, for being just who we are. We don't have to change. We don't have to, you know, dye our hair or change our clothes. <laughs> We're fine, just the way we are. What mother doesn't love her child unconditionally? And she's everybody's mother. And then finally, she is also the self. You see, so she's the complete opposite of the world. She's the complete opposite of what Buddha described as impermanent, unsatisfactory, and not self. She's permanent, she's eternal, she's completely satisfactory, and she is the self. So my experience is that when we approach her, we get the deep down, high quality, and long-lasting, eternal happiness that we're looking for. And it seems uncaused. It seems like it just kind of drops out of the sky and it's hard to even discern where it's coming from because it's coming from so deep inside that we don't see it as different from ourself because she is the self. <laughs> she is consciousness. Now, let me talk a little bit about consciousness. Because consciousness is like a mirror. Consciousness is completely pure. Consciousness reflects whatever is put before it, just like a mirror. Now, you can take a mirror and it will reflect exactly what's put before it without change, alteration. Well, it does kind of flip it backwards, right? But that's, that's all. Everything else is rendered absolutely realistically. But you can take a colored gel, huh? like in theatrical lighting, they have these colored gels and they put in front of the lights. You can put that in front of the mirror and then everything will look that color. See, you could take some kind of distorting lens and put it in front of the mirror and then everything the mirror reflects will be distorted. But that's not the mirror, okay? The mirror is simply feeding back whatever it's given. Similarly, consciousness is a pure and perfect mirror. It simply reflects whatever is put before it. But the problem is we cover that mirror with different kinds of filters, different colors, different distortions, different limitations. Huh? 
Imagine a mirror that's so big, it reflects the whole world. But then, because we can't handle that, we cut it down in size, or we put some kind of barrier in front of it that makes it seem smaller. But that's what we do with our consciousness. So when we get in touch with Ma, the goddess, in any of her forms, she starts to reflect what's really there. We start to see things as they really are from her point of view. And then we start to realize how pitiful and how unsatisfactory this whole world is. And right now the whole world is in a state of conflict. Huh? Especially in the West, people are in this political conflict, philosophical conflict. They're running after all these things, trying to attain satisfaction and it's failing. So they become more and more upset, more and more disturbed. They were already disturbed, but it's increasing more and more. Why? Because they're trying to get satisfaction out of something that can't deliver it. They're trying to get an unlimited view out of something limited, something temporary, imperfect, unsatisfactory, and not self. So we have this answer, we have the cure, we have the simple uh, medicine that fixes all these problems for everybody. Huh? But they won't take it. They won't take it because they say, oh, we've been burned in the past by so many wrong teachings and, and this and that and so on. So they don't have faith, they don't trust. Uh, they become atheistic, nihilistic. Even the people who are so-called spiritual now are following Neo-Advaita and they don't believe in God. They don't believe in any kind of service to God or bhakti huh? or puja or prayer or mantra or anything. So, of course, they're suffering. They're not getting the enlightenment that they claim to have because they're not following the process given in the scriptures by their mother. So what to do? What can we do? We can't force them, but we can make it known. Whatever media, whatever outreach is within our power. Huh? Like you could share this video on your social media account. Maybe somebody will see it and they'll take the clue and research this wonderful religion of the goddess and maybe they'll get something out of it. You know, we have to try. This is generosity. This is charity. They say you can give a man a fish, it'll feed him for a day. Or you can give them, teach him how to fish, you know, give him a rod and tackle and he's got fish for the rest of his life. This is even better. You know, you can give somebody money or sex or power or whatever, and they're happy for a short amount of time. But you can give them the goddess, the mother, and they'll be happy not only for the rest of this life, <laughs> for the rest of eternity. It's the greatest gift and the greatest happiness that anyone could experience. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti, Aum.